We have Dr. Vias or Vias, either one, he says, with us today in studio. Well, welcome. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I, good. I know you're dressed and, and ready to go off to work, and you just came from another clinic, so you are a busy guy. Yep, banging in there, keeping busy. Good, good. Well, what are some of the... Like, tell me just a, give me an overview of OCI care just as a whole. Yeah, sure. So, so what we are is we're a boutique ophthalmology clinic, and uh, our primary focus is really getting people to, to live without glasses, get their best possible vision, make sure their eyes are healthy for the rest of their lives so they can actually participate and do the things they want to do. Right, right. And, and <clears throat> is it just you in the facility or is it a group of doctors? No, so, so the, the office is, I'm the only physician there, so I do all the surgeries, I see all the patients. Um, I'm the only physician, but I do have an excellent support staff with me there. Good. And you know, I, I was just thinking about how you're different compared to maybe some other people, uh, some other places, and, yeah. and you're, you're kind of a one-stop shop, mm -hmm. like you told us before, mm -hmm. but you also are very hands-on. Yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, one of the biggest differences is I'm an osteopath, so I'm a DO, and, and a part of that is talking about the, t the person's entire life. So like how does vision or whatever the ailment is affect their entire life? Wow. <clears throat> so that approach is a little bit unique. Yes. Uh, coming from an osteopath. And then our office is also a little bit unique in the sense that, like you said, we do everything. Mm -hmm. So whether it be diabetes, a cataract, a retina issue, glaucoma, whatever it is with the eyes, we can take care of it. So diabetes, I know we wanted to talk about that. How does it affect seeing? Yeah, so diabetes is, is pretty devastating to the eyes, and it's one of those things where uh, you, you really want to catch it early. I kind of think of that in a couple stages. You have your early stage, where you can really work with your primary care doctor to make sure things don't get worse, because the eyes are the first sign of diabetes, typically. And then you have your severe stage, where things are, things are getting bad, and you would need things like lasers, injections, all that kind of stuff, and we'd, we would have the ability to do all of that in the office. Is that regardless of which type you have of diabetes? <clears throat> so both types can affect the back of the eye. Um, right. it, when it comes to the types, usually the type 2 is affecting people later in life and mm -hmm. type 1 is a little bit younger because it happens earlier in life. Um, right. But they can affect the eye in the same way. So they're causing the same pathology in the back of the eye. So what are some of the things that you would notice like if you were diagnosed with diabetes, what are some things that you would notice right away with your eyes? Yeah, so you're, you're not gonna notice a lot early. So in that early stage portion, you're not gonna notice much, maybe a little blurry vision, uh, maybe like frequent glasses changes, that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, but later on, you're gonna notice it. You're gonna have decrease in your vision, very blurry. You may be missing some spots of vision, things okay. like that. So what do you do in that case? In the second stage case? Yeah, like if, I mean, I guess at the beginning, would it be something, obviously they're gonna see you once a year for a checkup, right? So yeah. then at that time you would be able to notice some differences? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So when we, when, we, uh, when we see you every year, that means you're pr pretty much stable. Uh, we just check to make sure there's no changes, nothing worsening. Mm -hmm. uh, but when, when we need to see you more frequently, like every three months or something like that, that's when we're seeing some changes. Okay. And we wanna kind of, when it comes to another osteopathic approach, is the body heals itself better than anything I can do, typically. Mm. And so uh, the reason why I say that is if you catch it early, you can make lifestyle changes mm -hmm. and not need a laser or an injection or a surgery or whatever else. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the, the purpose of screening and making sure okay. that you're seeing, yeah. All right, well that's good because you just never know if yeah. um, you know whatever is going to happen down the path. Some effects of that can happen. Of so course, yeah. That's good to know. Yep, yep. Now, uh, in front of you, you have what I thought was Oculus because it looks very similar to the virtual reality uh, things. Which oh, it sure does. It, it's, but it's, you call this something different, virtual field. Yeah, it's very similar to the Oculus. So it's the same technology. It's okay. virtual field, virtual technology, and basically. Um, for those of you who have taken like a glaucoma test where you click every time you see a light, it's the same test but in a much more compact okay. way. Um, so this helps us out quite a bit in patients who you know, may have trouble transferring from a chair, may have trouble with oh. life moving around, yeah. wheelchair bound. 
And it's much easier, quicker, and a lot, lot less stressful on the patient. You don't have okay. to patch over the eye. You don't have to take your glasses off. Okay. Lots of benefits to this. Can I, can I see of it? Of course. I'm going to hold this. Yeah. So does it just work off a remote? or? Yeah, so this is the remote that you would use for it. Okay. And it, it just works off of Wi-Fi. So, oh, we so can... you just power it on. You just put it on their eyes like this, right? Yep, exactly. And so what are they going to see when they look inside? Yeah, so when they look inside, they, they would basically see a field and a central uh, fixation point. And they'd be looking at that. Anytime they see a light flash in the periphery, you'd be clicking on your clicker here. Okay. Yeah. And you don't get too much resistance of people having this over their eyes? No, actually, it's, it's actually much better. Even for people who have issues with like anxiety, claustrophobia, oh, this okay. seems to work better. Oh, the nose is open. Okay. Um, and so it's only over the eyes. There's no other constraints. Whereas the uh, traditional virtual field machines, you have to put your whole head into a machine and it's kind of enclosed. Oh, so it's see, a, I forgot what that was like because yeah. I remember the one where you do this and then you used to do the puff in the eye. Right. That's but now, the, uh, now they don't do that anymore. Yeah, Thank we goodness. don't do that at all. Some places still do that. We, okay. we just don't do that. Yeah. So you still, but nevertheless, when you do what you're saying, you would put your whole head on something instead of that. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. This, you would just be, you can even be laying down in okay. a chair, an examination chair, wherever. Okay. Yeah. And what are you looking for when you use this? So this is a test for glaucoma. It can test for what we call retinal detachments, and it can test for macular degeneration as well. Wow, um, okay. And it tells us if you're seeing everything in your visual field or not. It also can help us understand about cataracts, so if cataracts are affecting your vision. Mm -hmm. And also can help us understand if your eyelids are helping, or oh. excuse me, are obstructing your vision. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that, you know, technology is amazing. And who would have thought, now I wonder which came first. Did this come first? Or did Oculus come first for the Oculus games? Oculus came first. It did. Oculus came first. It's actually that technology that allowed us to use it for these types of purposes. Go figure that yeah. gaming would turn into something that you could use for <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, diagnosing people. Oh, yeah. It's just amazing technology these days, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then th this is just in the clinic. There's, there's a lot of this technology that we use surgically as well. Right. Yeah. Right. Give me an example. So an example surgically would be there's, there's something called Aura. Where, where basically the same kind of setup is, is live in the, in, the, uh, in the OR with the patient. And it's a diff little bit different technology, but it uses light to check the power of the lens implant you would need mm. right then and there. Mm -hmm. And you can check that with what you've measured previously in the clinic. Gotcha. Uh, so, you're, so you're absolutely sure that that's what they need. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for all the information. Of course. This is great. I mean, it's so nice to know about different technology. Yep. And then um, when someone would come to your office, would they ask for this or would it be something that you would just give them a choice? Yeah, so this is actually something we do for every new patient. Okay. Every new patient that comes in gets one of these, so we okay. have an understanding of their baseline visual field. Okay. Um, and then moving forward, it just depends. Like if they have glaucoma or whatever else, it needs to be monitored. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for the information. It was nice to see you. You too. It was nice being here. All right. If you want more information about the virtual field or if you have general questions, you can always go to oc-i.com. We'll be right back.